Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a look at and review of both CarPro's newly released XL detailing brush, as well as the previously released CarPro two-piece detailing brush set. Okay guys, now just so it doesn't get confusing during this whole review when I'm talking about a specific brush, I'm going to refer to each of these brushes as the small, large and XL brushes respectively. It's also important to note that while the XL brush is sold individually, the small and large brushes only come as a two-piece set. Now while all three brushes certainly share many uniform design and material similarities, they also branch off in very different directions when you get down to each specific brush. So let's start by looking at the brushes as a whole to see what they share and then more individually to see how they differ from one another and I'll give you my own thoughts, tips and experience with them after a bit of use. Now CarPro has certainly gone with a general stylized look that follows through to each of the three brushes, which is the obvious vibrant orange color theme that's broken up with some black lettering, rubber or bristle black accents. Looks is always a personal thing, but I like the fact that they look like part of a set yet still look individually different and easily distinguishable, which makes sense when you wanna quickly grab the right brush. All the brush handles are made from quite a thick, robust and solid plastic that you're not going to snap or break if you drop them from any height. I tried it and they more than passed the test. It's also important to mention that they are molded from a single piece of high strength plastic, meaning that there's no detachable handles or extra added housing weak points in the brush's assembly. I must have gone through hundreds of detailing brushes in my time and it's almost always been the added plastic or wooden brush housing or handles that are glued, screwed or snapped on that always break first. So based on the single piece and solid material construction of the CarPro brushes, I just can't see that happening. The only removable parts are the rubber grips found on both the small and large brushes that for some reason were not added to the XL brush, which I think is a shame as the rubber grip certainly helps you hold on to the brush a little better when your hands or gloves get wet. But in saying that, there's also some textured plastic at the grip section of the brushes, which even without the rubber helps you grip the brush a little more securely. A couple of other universal design features to point out is that all three brushes do have hanging hook holes, which is super handy to have. One thing I found really important with all the brushes that's easily overlooked is that at the base of the bristle housing is a smooth rounded edge to prevent any damage to the surface if that edge makes contact with whatever you're cleaning at the time. And again, going through my collection of other detailing brushes, this isn't a safety feature universally seen. Something I noticed about all the CarPro brushes is that they have a perfect center of balance at the grip point. I know this may not seem like a big deal, but after using brushes for extended periods that are either top or base heavy so that you have to constantly correct that by tilting the brush adds to user fatigue. And this is certainly something that just doesn't happen by accident, as you can see that the length and thickness of each individual brush handle has been adjusted to perfectly counterbalance the heaviness of the brush head section. I'll lastly add here that after dozens and dozens of uses with each brush, I've only seen one or two bristles come off right at the start. And since then, nothing at all, which is way above par in my experience. In fact, I even tried pulling out some of the bristles and they are super difficult to pluck out compared to other detailing brushes I tried this out on. Capro also claims that the brushes are chemical, alcohol and solvent resistant and will stand up to repeated rigorous use without deterioration. Now I can confirm this is true after a few dozen uses with no signs of wear, but I'll have to see how that goes from there on. So all in all guys, the construction and material of the brushes seems really solid. The design aspects seem very thoughtful and functional and the looks and aesthetics are at least subjectively quite nice. So let's now have a look at each brush more individually and its more specific design, characteristics and use. 
The CarPro XL brush contains slightly thick, rigid, and non-feathered synthetic nylon bristles that come to a thinner point at their ends and individually measure just over 50 millimeters in length. The overall length of the brush is about 240 millimeters, and it measures 40 millimeters at the thickest point of the head, down to just 15 mil at the thinnest point of the handle. There's no doubting that the XL brush is quite a hefty brush for its size, coming in at just over 125 grams in weight. Now that may not seem like a lot, but it actually weighs more than the other two brushes combined. One thing I noticed about the XL brush, even more so than the other two brushes, is how easily it rinses out and releases dirt and other particles from the bristles, and additionally also dries very rapidly by comparison. Now I'm sure it's got something to do with the specific nylon bristles CarPro chose to go with on this brush, but they do have a high sheen and almost hydrophobic finish on them that makes cleaning and maintaining the brush super easy. It's also important to understand that although the XL brush is undoubtedly the most aggressive brush of the three, it's certainly not an extremely aggressive brush as far as what's available in car detailing brushes as a whole. So although it's not a super soft feather dusting or horsehair leather brush, it's certainly less aggressive than most upholstery, carpet and even wheel or tire brushes in general. I'd actually say it's a mid-range brush as far as aggression is concerned. So having said that, where would I use it in automotive detailing? After testing all three brushes on just about every car surface and material known to man, I can tell you there's a lot of crossover with all three brushes in where I choose to use them, largely based on how bad the surface is soiled and what's needed in terms of cleaning ability and aggression. But overall, where I like the XL brush most was on areas and surfaces like extremely thin 20 to 40 profile tire walls where my large tire brushes were just too big. And I was actually unsure at the start whether it would be aggressive enough for tires, but it actually surprised me just how well it worked over the tire walls in particular. Now I'm not saying you should use it on insanely bad and large tire walls because it would just take too long, but on thinner and slightly soiled tires it should work an absolute treat. I also found that in and around car wheel areas like mud flaps, brake calipers, springs and other plastics and rubbers, it was also a well balanced brush to have enough stiffness and bite to clean well but not enough to scratch most materials in wheel well areas. As far as car rims go, I would say that if you have for example a set of black gloss rims that you know have a softer clear coat, this may not be the best choice. But I can say that on harder clear coats, powder coated and bare metal rims, I saw no evidence that this brush was causing any swirls or scratches when I used it in a responsible manner. Meaning I chemically treated and pressure rinsed the wheels down first and didn't use it with an abundance of pressure. Now if you've got an extremely dirty bad set of wheels, this brush could really come in handy. But if they aren't too bad, you could be best served using a slightly more gentle feathered brush. I think when it comes to engine bays, this could be my new favorite brush, as I personally thought this is where it shined the most. The handle was long enough to get some good leverage in certain areas, but not too long to get in the way in other areas. And just like cleaning the wheel areas, I found it to be gentle enough not to cause any obvious scratches or damage, but aggressive enough to get some serious good cleaning achieved. Now although I wouldn't tend to recommend the XL for brushing out piano plastics and other soft and overly sensitive painted or coated trims, I found it to be very safe and effective on harder exterior plastics and rubbers. But also remember guys that technique plays a big part in every detailing tool we use, so making sure that you thoroughly rinse the surface first and don't hammer down with pressure also largely determines the safetyness and results you get. As far as interior detailing with this brush goes, I think it's going to be a great tool for many interior cleaning applications. Some materials like carpets and fabrics, there's virtually no concern that the XL brush would cause any damage at all. However, in many cases, you may find that a larger brush or something like the CarPro Inner Scrub Glove is a more efficient tool to use on those larger areas.
On smaller hard plastics, vinyls and rubbers, I think is where this brush makes the most sense and will be extremely effective and in most cases quite safe. Now I did also try the XL on a couple of leather seats and trims and although I saw zero evidence that it caused any scratches, scuffs or wear marks, it doesn't mean that it can't on softer older leather trims, so just take that with a grain of salt and maybe just realise that if the leather isn't overly stained, a horse, pig hair or feathered nylon brush should do the trick and is always going to be a less aggressive option. All in all guys, the main takeaway with this brush after dozens of uses is that it's extremely effective and adaptable to so many applications and really turned out to be safer than I first anticipated, even on some sensitive surfaces where I thought it may cause damage and swirls which didn't end up being the case. Now my assessment will be that if the surface you're cleaning isn't too bad, then you could really use one of the other two brushes instead. But if you do need that extra cleaning power, don't be afraid to use the XL brush on anything apart from those extra sensitive surfaces. Now the CarPro large brush also contains slightly thick and rigid bristles, but unlike the XL brush, they're naturally feathered boar's hair bristles that measure just over 55 millimeters in length. The overall length of the brush is identical to the XL brush at 240 millimeters, but it measures at a slightly smaller 30 millimeters at the thickest point of the head, down to 30 millimeters at the thinnest point of the handle. The weight of the brush is more of a standard to light measurement, coming in at 67 grams and a half in total. Something I noticed about the large brush and its natural boar hair bristles is that it doesn't clean or dry up as super easy as the other two brushes with their synthetic fibers. So you need to spend a little more time rinsing out, cleaning and drying this brush by comparison. I'm not saying it's overly difficult or anything like that, just a bit more clingy to particles and liquids which may not be an entirely bad thing. The first thing you need to understand about this brush and something I actually underestimated is that it has a substantial break-in period. Now I've owned quite a few horse and pig hair brushes in the past so I know they take a few uses to break the hairs in and get them working optimally. But with this brush I'm still finding that after three to four dozen uses it's still getting better and better after each use. So the biggest takeaway from me using this brush was that straight out of the box it's a little stiff, aggressive and really doesn't clean, foam up or perform anywhere near as well as it does after a few dozen uses. In fact it feels and works like a completely different brush after that break in period and I'm really loving the way it works so much more than I could have guessed. So my advice with this brush is to break it in on some less aggressive materials like carpet, upholstery, rubbers and harder plastics to start with and then after that period it'll not only start cleaning better but also be gentle enough to use on more sensitive surfaces like leathers, softer paints and more sensitive trims. Out of all three brushes here this is probably the one I would go for if I had to choose only one. Now it's not as powerful as the XL brush when you need that extra cleaning power and it's not as gentle as a small brush when you're faced with super sensitive materials and finishes but once broken in there's honestly very little you can't do with this brush that the other two brushes can. It's more so about the fact that having all three brushes lets you choose the most appropriate, efficient and safe option depending on what the situation calls for. So overall guys, although you'll probably find better efficiency in the XL brush for the tougher grime and find better appropriateness in the smaller brush for mild and sensitive cleaning, the large boar hair brush is really the happy medium of the two and the one that surprised me the most. The CarPro small detailing brush contains extremely thin and soft synthetic nylon bristles that come to an even thinner and softer point at the white bleached ends. The bristles measure at 45 millimeters in length and the overall length of the brush is just 165 millimeters measuring at 25 millimeters at the thickest point of the head down to just 15 millimeters at the thinnest point. The weight of the brush is just under 45 grams making it a very light overall brush though for its tiny size it actually feels substantial in weight. 
Now I can tell you that just a few years ago, no detailing brand was making these super soft brushes. So I and many other detailers I'm sure were stealing our girlfriends and wife's makeup brushes instead. And just from a personal and masculine point of view, it's nice not having to use a brush with the words CoverGirl stamped on the side for a change. Overall guys, this type of super fine and super soft synthetic bristle brush is as gentle as it gets in the detailing world and is certainly pretty handy to have in many situations. Firstly, this is a great dusting brush due to the fact that the bristles are so fine, gentle and plentiful that they safely pick up and even attract dust away from the surface you're brushing much better than the other two brushes can. So whether it's just dusting a mirror, screen or the entire interior cabin with a vacuum cleaner in the other hand, it's very safe and effective in that process. Now if you're dealing with a super dirty interior with large dirt and particles, I'd almost say go with the large boar hair brush instead. But otherwise, this brush would be my go-to for light to moderate interior dusting and vacuuming. I also found it very useful as a pre-dusting brush before using the other brushes to do some deeper cleaning. So you can, depending on the situation, use it alongside the other brushes in a multi-step process. Apart from that, I'd say that for all those extremely sensitive surfaces, like display screens, piano black plastics, and old aging leather, this is gonna be by far the safest option available. And if this brush scuffs or scratches the surface, then you're out of luck finding a more gentle alternative. Beyond that, guys, you need to understand that just like the other two brushes, it's mostly about the appropriateness of use. If you've got an extremely well-maintained vehicle that just needs the lightest touch to remove the lightest grime, then you could certainly use this brush for just about every area inside and out. But also understand that if you're dealing with any significant amount of contamination, this brush is just gonna take an order of magnitude longer to clean that grime off compared to the other two brushes. So as is the case with all things detailing related, you need to adjust to every job, and in this case, find the right brush for the right job. I really don't know what else to say about these brushes, other than I've had more detailers and enthusiasts sharing with me just how much they love them, even more so than any other CarPro product in the last few months. And I do know that they are selling like hotcakes, which I think in itself says a lot. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. When you get up close, you can see little notches where the plastic has come off the molds, which could be a little nicer. I've also noticed a little smudging of the ink around the CarPro lettering, and I have to say that although the small and large brush set seems very well priced, the XL brush is on the pricey side, and I do wish that it had that same rubber grip that comes with the other two brushes. So is that nitpicking? <laughs> Absolutely but I honestly couldn't think of anything else bad to point out, so there you go. I really hope this video review was helpful to some of you guys out there, and if you'd like to help support this channel and future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad, which I'll have a link to in the description box, and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.